Let me go to the next day. Sorry, I, my computer screen is a bit odd. So basically, in the next page, if I was able to find it here, you probably will find it if you go with your, even with your phone right now, uh, you will see two activities. One is called Stomp Rockets, one is called Pump Rockets. So for Stomp Rockets, it's a simple rocket that you will stomp on a bottle and it will propel. With Pump Rockets, you'll have to pump with a bike pump uh, to, 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 to put some pressure. Very simple, classical activities, things that you probably already know, already have used your family with. The more innovative thing I think, or that is more rarely seen, is to link space with 3D design. And if I come back to the, to the previous page, I had Instructables, but I had also Tinkercad and Autodesk Fusion 360. These two things are 3D design softwares. So what I can do for, with this is not build with my hands, but build on my computer and design and shape some different elements. Obviously, that means that with Tinkercad, I will be taken to the first activity, which is traveling to the moon and to build a rocket. Let's go to my project. And here I have a very simple 3D design tool. This is a, really a 3D design tool for beginners. So it's, you can use it with children, 7-year-old, 8-year-old children without any problem. You can use it with adults who never did 3D design before. It's colorful, it's simple, very intuitive, very, very user-friendly. Um, I think this was one of the interesting things the Foundation decided to do, was to partner with Autodesk and use very robust and well-tested uh, softwares that already existed on the market, and not build something from scratch that would have issues all the time. And obviously, on the left, I have a little tutorial who will teach me how to make my own rocket and some, a few elements I should take care of. This, for me, is a quite interesting tool that can be used in many ways. First, there is the design aspect. But behind the design aspect, there is also the area dynamic. That the question of compromise between how much space do I need because I want to put a satellite, or how big the satellite is, how much space do I need because I, I want to ensure it has enough let's say fuel, so that it can travel very far away. And all of these in the design can appear and can be discussed. Moreover, this can, is a collaborative tool as well, which means it can be used as a Google Doc. I can start building my own rocket, then invite you on my design, and just like with a Google Doc where we have several people working on, on, a, on a Word document, we will be several people working on the same rocket together and assemble it together. This also means that at the end of my design, I can obviously export it, and either 3D print it and have my own very rocket, but also export it to Minecraft. So instead of 3D printing, you can also have a Minecraft environment where you put people's creation and you create a, an aerospace world of your classroom. So this is basically the, the Tinkercad element. It's not the only one. If I come back to the mission to the moon, the last one is Outlast Fusion 360, which is also about 3D design, but this is a fully professional software used by university students or professionals, and you can use it already. You can, you, we have some 12-year-old children who are using it. It's not so complicated, but as the first step into 3D design, it might not be the best, the most intuitive and accessible. Is that it fine so far? Would you like to discover it by yourself? Yes. So what I would like you to do is in the next five minutes or so to go into this address or you can just google Airbus Foundation Discovery Space as you wish and there choose the mission to the moon and from there you can just take five minutes exploring what are the kinds of resources, what are the videos, what kind are the kinds of topics because we've discussed so far rocket building, which is a very classical thing. But if you look at the other topics, like building a moon habitat, this means that the issues are waste management. How do you manage waste in space? How do you manage food in space? What do you eat? How do you breathe? So these are the new questions which are much, more, more, much larger and probably much more interdisciplinary as well, uh, that are related to space. How do we live in space? Not only how do we use a rocket. 
So I, I, mean, I leave you five minutes to, to investigate this. And if you are a little bit cheeky, you can even go into this link. And here, this is my own Tinkercad rocket. So I erased it so that there is nothing. But if several of you want to go into that link, you will all, all be building the very same rocket so you can build it together if you like. It's an empty project, yes. But you, you can start following the tutorial, and but if someone else starts, you can build it. You can try to see once again: Are you able to build it together without speaking, or, or things like this? Yes, I, I, I shared one just for the sake of this workshop to, to save time. So you can either explore the platform or try to go on the rocket and see if you'd like to build it. It is possible to do it on a cell phone, the Tinkercad. It is accessible from a cell phone. It is obviously not the most convenient way to design on a very small screen, but it, it is possible. ask you to create an account It seems that someone started to build something on my Tinkercad rocket. It, yeah, it, on the phone it's, it's quite difficult. It's, it's possible, it, but it's, it's quite difficult. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Something new, new happened. So, as you can see, how many people are, are on the Tinkercad on this one person, two persons, three persons? Okay, so we have three persons collaborating. You can see now we have even spare parts for our rocket, that's good. Um, and obviously it would be very easy then to transform it into something that looks like Minecraft or even different kinds of block with different kinds of... element here or 
we can even have something that looks like a Lego. So that means you can link, sorry, you can link uh, your work here on 3D design with a Lego activity. You can build everything digitally, then translate into have the Lego plan of what you want to build afterwards. I'll So you've explored a little bit the, the resources and the, the question we, we, we have now is how could you use these resources? You can obviously use them as small things you take here and there for your lesson. You can steal a video about a topic, you can use a bit of, a bit of Tinkercad or uh, you can reuse a do-it-yourself activity you have seen on Instructables and, and use it. But you can also try to use the approach giving a challenge about going to space, about flying, about your mobility different kinds of challenge, exploring the challenge and then having a more design thinking approach. How can we answer to this challenge? Let's have brainstorming, let's, exp let's inspire ourselves with other examples. Let's do a brainstorming and have ideas, let's choose an idea, let's at prototype it or at least start to design this idea more precisely and we can design it with low tech materials or with, with 3D design approach. And then we can obviously 3D print it or put it in Minecraft or do other kinds of stuff with it. And I'll go back to my presentation. So the, the question you might start asking yourselves is which kind of different kinds of activities could you use this platform for, for which kind of activities and what support would you need for, from the foundation? What would be your needs? What would, your, would be your wishes? I, I'm asking this because at this stage, as I said, it's quite the beginning for the foundation to start working in this. That means it's the moment when we still have some freedom. We can still try and fail and retry and refail a lot of time. For now, it's still possible. So, if you have some wishes, if you have some needs, if you tell us we would like to have this extra element, or we would like, would, could you get, provide some things about this topic, or we have this issue with the platform, at this stage, we can still move and develop the platform in directions that are meaningful for you. Yes. Someone mentioned um, uh, designing on airplanes in classroom, and, and one thing that I thought would be one concept that could be useful to illustrate with this kind of experiment are um, toys. You know, um, and in flight dynamics, when you try to control the airplane, you have center of pressure, you have center of mass, and this kind of concepts. And, um, and it can be nice when you try to stabilize a flight in the classroom if they throw a paper airplanes or whatever. How can we make some simple experiments to illustrate the concept of torques? You know, maybe using some paper clips on the paper planes or whatever. So if you have some ideas or videos that, that support this, it would be wonderful. Thanks, that's a, that's a, great, that's a great one. You tackling torques especially. Um, so yes, this can be tackled with things that fly like planes, also with rockets, with various elements. And maybe with Tinkercad there could be some, some interesting thing we could do. Uh, just as a few words, we have developed some training modules uh, for, science, for science centers and museums, so not for formal education, not for teachers yet. These were more designed for, uh, for science centers who may want to use these resources, because we thought we have the resources, we made a consultation with science centers, we had 40 science centers all over the world, on every continent, try the resources, say they love them, say they love the approach. But what we missed is how do we transform these resources into a science center activity, informal education activity. So we did build some workshops and, they, they, and some training modules, and there are some things there that might be useful for you. Um, especially, for example, the first one was a very simple activity we designed, it was some science centers asked us, we want a very short one, a 30 minutes activity, something where they can come 30 minutes and it's done. And for this, it's a very, it's a very basic one, designing a rocket, asking yourself a few questions about rocket science, and then 3D printing it. Printing it. You have a few elements of freedom, you can customize the rocket, but not too much because it's meant to be very short. And at the end, after 30 minutes, we had some, some science centers, for example, Cap Science in France, who tried it and who had families going each with their own little rockets that they had customized and made themselves. It was quite 
quite a nice moment. Here we have a longer workshop, which is a rocket inquiry workshop. We will have elements from the long tech experiments, the rocket, the classical rocket experiments we have mentioned before, and we will, instead of just building them and flying them, we'll have an inquiry workshop where students will have to try different shapes, different number of fins, different elements to propel the rocket, so that they can investigate by themselves, try out, and see what is working better, what is working less good, why? And they have an inquiry moment with some rockets. This would be a one hour and a half workshop. Then we added a second part, another one hour and a half, if, if for people who want it, which is now let's go online and let's do some 3D design of rockets. Let's see if you can translate the lessons you learned by experimenting with the Logitech material into the digital world. And for me, this is quite uh, an important skill for students, being able to link what's happening online and what's happening with the matter, with the physical world. And if they can learn some lessons and some things by experimenting here, then apply them in that 3D design, you can sense there is a strong learning that is happening here. So we, and we can end at the, by, by having 3D files of all the design rockets, having a rocket exhibitions with all the students. If we go further from the rocket, a more complex and much longer workshop is one we call the Moon Village. And in that case, we use another tutorial, which is about building a Moon Village with different challenges. As I mentioned, how do we manage waste? How do we manage energy? We will need lots of different components in our village, around our house, to manage all these elements. So here, the students will discover the challenges about living on the moon, and we'll focus on one or two challenges only. So we have small groups of students, each of them choose only one or two challenges, like energy, like waste, and not all of them at the same time. And they will have to, to, to brainstorm, create, design, the various elements for the house so that it deals with energy, it deals with the waste, it deals with the food. And at the end, obviously, you will have the students discover each other's creation, and we even add a suggestion, which, means, which is they could review each other's crea creation. We could have a small peer-reviewed process here. We, could have, we, can, we can have the students go and each other, a group of students go and discover the work of another group and have to review it and critique it and say, oh, this kind of house is especially good because of this. This idea is a clever way to deal with this problem. However, this house is not well equipped if there is this new issue happening with the cosmic rays, for example. And that way, the assessment is less coming as from you as a teacher, but really from the students having to worry themselves. When they do this and they come back, come back to their project, they have very different ways to, to look at their own project because they have the eyes of the teacher, of the critique themselves. And so, at the end, we have this nice little village we can assemble together all the, uh, all the houses, all the facilities that they have built. We can 3D print them or we can all put them on Minecraft to have a whole moon village environment. So that's a big, longer workshop. We need at least three hours for this one. But we also added an extra part, only for the people who want it. And this came from some schools and some science centers as well who told us we would like to link it with literacy. Because we found out that we don't tackle literacy as well. Speaking, writing, articulating things is actually extremely important in science. I live in Bristol currently. The science center in Bristol has changed its name to We the Curious, and it's now all about curiosity. And they frame it as curiosity is about asking questions. So all their methodology is about getting questions from people and building their exhibitions, their programs from the questions of people. Getting, you know this better than I as teachers, you know how hard it is to get questions from your students, to get relevant questions, to get juicy questions, questions that you can use and that you can uncover things with. This is difficult. And this is not only about a science skill, it's also a, a skill that requires literacy and being able to articulate your thought, to capture what is the key thing here and how to say it. Many students have great ideas for questions, but don't say any questions because they don't know how to put them in their mouth, to put them in words. So we added another element, which is a creative writing part, where students can write at the end the story of the team that is living in this village that will use, obviously, all the facilities that they will have to use the science they have learned, but into a writing, into a story. 
And that is quite nice because it engages students who sometimes are absolutely disengaged with science, and here suddenly, who become lively, who interact with the scientific content, and who produce a creative writing within there. So it's, it's a tool I quite like for various reasons, because it engages other students, because it is, I think, relevant to science, also to have literacy skills. And last, because some schools have now this requirement to link literacy with science in a more, in a broader way. Do you have questions so far? No? Yes. You've carried out these projects in school, right? Um, I was, my question is really from the teacher point of view. If a teacher wants to make this kind of project design with classes, um, it sounds to me that, okay, say that your class is already engaged, so you don't need like just something just to engage them. They're engaged. But this project, you want them to really make something that they will learn the concepts and understand. And the tricky part is that it involves many different concepts about fluid dynamics, about biology, about, uh, about pressure, about energy consumption and conservation and transfer of heat and whatever. And I can only see that students would all have all these things in maybe in last year, or do you need to make short introduction to all these topics previous to such an activity? So my, my advice, there are two ways I think to take it. Either you take it as a very general thing and you don't go into any details and you just want it as an introduction to these challenges and see how they relate to biology, to how do they relate to physics in some ways, but just start this like uh, web of, of, of concepts, but don't dig too much. This is one way to do it. The other way to do it is to choose to focus on something, to say that you will focus especially on energy and there you will, have, you will be able to give them to take some time to give them much more content on the energy and even if it's not, it's a bit going beyond their current curriculum or the, where they are in the year so you can then take a few steps specifically in one direction what you, what you will never be able to do obviously is to give them all the tools deep, deep, all the deep ones and in details for this however the good thing is here they, for example, don't have too many calculations, they don't have to, so they can start to, to grasp this concept in a very intuitive way, and then when you tackle them in the school, when it's the right time, then you, you'll be able to see the, the equation that are linked, the deeper principles, they can have a first intuitive access to these principles here. And the, the very approach here means that they first have to design, and then they learn. So they learn why they're doing the design, 